Hi, this is Dr. Stephen Park at drstephenpark.com. Can sleep problems cause benign positional vertigo? A few days after my third son, Brennan, was born, I suffered from classic benign positional vertigo. Looking back on the course of events, I had a eureka moment last night that literally kept me up in bed. Benign positional vertigo, or BPV, is a well-described inner ear condition that ENT doctors like myself treat all the time. The classic description is when you feel dizzy, like the room is spinning, just, just after a sudden head movement, either up or down or side to side. The spinning will usually last a few seconds, and you may have residual nausea and imbalance for hours to days. It's typically preceded by an infection, head trauma, stress, or in many cases, no significant events at all. The dix hall pike maneuver is performed to make the diagnosis, and the modified Epley maneuver is then continued to cure the problem if the dix hall pike is positive. In my experience, the Epley maneuver works about 80 to 90% of the time to cure the problem instantly if the, if the dix hall pike is strongly positive. It's one of the more gratifying maneuvers that I perform for patients. When I developed the BPV, I didn't have an infection or any kind of head trauma. The only thing that I can remember is that I was severely sleep deprived the prior few days with all the excitement surrounding Brennan's birth. I had the classic symptoms, spinning lasting a few seconds, aggravated by sudden head turns, particularly every time I lay down in bed or roll over to the left. After performing the Dix Hall Pike and Epley Maneuver on myself, the condition got better. The explanation for BPV is as follows. Your inner ear has three semicircular canals in three different planes, each filled with a fluid with fluid and a sensor that sways back and forth depending on which direction you turn your head. Essentially, these three paired semicircular canals tell your brain uh, what position your head is in. At the, at the ends of each of these canals, there's a sensor that sways back and forth depending on which direction your head moves. Small calcium carbonate stones are stuck to the top of these sensors, making them sway easier. The theory is that if one of these stones falls off, and as you move your head into a certain position, the stone moves to the top of the semicircle. Then the stone takes a few seconds to slowly move down the canal until it reaches the bottom most gravity dependent position in the semicircle. During movement of the stone, fluid waves are transmitted to the sensor which sends a one-sided signal to the brain which thinks you're moving your head. Various models and even surgical findings uh, where they find stones on, um, during surgery confirm this theory. But here's a more plausible explanation based on my own experience. Stones are constantly regenerated uh, and reformed, uh, and some fall off the sensor occasionally. However, if you suffer head trauma, more stones may become dislodged and produce symptoms. But why would a viral infection cause a stone to become dislodged? And in most cases, there's no history of infection head trauma at all. Any infection, whether a common cold or sinusitis, causes swelling in the nose and throat, which narrows the upper airway, which narrows the throat even further, leading to more obstructions, causing more reflux, leading to more throat inflammation and narrowing. I discuss my sleep breathing paradigm in much more detail in my book, Sleep Interrupted. What's, more ha what's probably happening is that sleep deprivation of any kind, including that period after a new baby is born, sleep apnea or upper airway resistance syndrome or insomnia, can all heighten your nervous system, leading to hypersensitive sensors. It's like when you get a migraine and certain noises or bright lights can make you cringe. In the same way, a hypersensitive inner ear sensor can overreact to any extra form of stimulation, including otoliths or stones. If you take this concept even further, if the other parts of the inner ear are also extra sensitive, then you can have anything from hyperacusis, which is a sensitivity to certain sounds or voices, to ringing. So ultimately, it may not be due to free-floating stones per se, but that if your nervous system is extra sensitive to stimulation due to various forms of sleep deprivation or added stress, then you can, you can suffer classic BPB symptoms. Am I completely out of line or am I onto something? Please give me your opinion uh, by sending me an email at drsevenpark.com.